Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to use Linux to rescue files from a Windows computer. Now the thing is, sometimes hard drives die. That's just the way they are. And I certainly hope you have backups, but I get it. If you have a machine that has failed, you could use a Linux live image to actually pull files from that installation without having to boot it. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to download a Linux distribution, write it to a flash drive, boot from it, and then use it to grab the files from your Windows installation. And again, this is great if you have an unbootable computer, or maybe you want to get rid of a computer and you want to pull files off of it before you do so. Now, of course, you should absolutely make sure that you securely wipe your disk, but if you want to grab the files off of it first, well, this video is definitely going to help you out. So in order to get started, what I recommend that you have at your disposal is at least one flash drive. We're going to use that to create a bootable Linux image that we could boot from to recover files with. And then you should have another storage device. It could be another flash drive or an external hard drive that we'll be using to copy files too. Now you could forego that requirement if you want to use something like Google Drive, which I'll show you later in the video. But for right now, I recommend you have a flash drive and a storage medium to copy your files to, and then we'll be able to get started. Now, before we do get started, I wanna take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, Linode. Linode is an awesome cloud service provider that you can use to spin up your very own Linux server in minutes. You can set up your own web server, a blog, a Nextcloud instance, or you could even spin up a Linode instance to act as a test server that you could use while you're learning and going through any of the tutorial videos that are available on Learn Linux TV. Linode has an awesome and easy to use interface, straightforward pricing, awesome customer service. It's just a great cloud platform overall. And in fact, Linode is actually the official cloud server provider for Learn Linux TV because the entire web presence for Learn Linux TV runs on Linode. So thank you so much to Linode for sponsoring this channel yet again. I really appreciate it and definitely check them out. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive into the topic at hand and check out how to recover files from a Windows installation using Linux. Now what you're seeing right here is a different Windows computer. So effectively, if you have a Windows machine that's not starting up or you need to recover files from it, then you'll probably need to use another computer in order to prepare the boot media that we'll be using and that's what I'm simulating right here. So there's a few things that we'll need to download. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a browser. Doesn't matter which one. And the first thing we're going to search for is Zubuntu, X-U-B-U-N-T-U, -U -U, just like that. And here we are at the official Zubuntu website. And Zubuntu is actually a derivative of Ubuntu, a popular distribution. But what I like about Zubuntu is that it doesn't use as many system resources as Ubuntu uses. Now, to be fair, Ubuntu is actually fairly good with resources, but Zubuntu will work very well on an older machine as well as a newer machine. And I don't know if you have a slower machine or a faster machine, so I figured by recommending this one right here, regardless of what type of computer you have, you should be good to go. Now, what I'm going to do is download version 2110. I recommend for this use case that you download the latest and greatest. Now, normally the LTS version, which is as of this time, 2004, that one is usually better for long-term installations when you want to run Linux. But if all you want to do is recover files from a Windows system, then you should have the latest and greatest because that'll make sure that it has drivers for your hardware. So I'll click on the download button underneath Zubuntu 2110. And in your case, you can go ahead and download a newer version if a newer version is available. And what we're going to do is download the 64-bit version. Now, contrary to popular belief, 64-bit support has been in CPUs for quite a while now, so there's a very good chance that your system, even if it's very old, will still support the 64-bit version. Now, if your system does not actually support 64-bit software, then what I'm going to do is include a link down below in the description, and that link will take you to an alternate Linux distribution, Debian, that has 32-bit versions still available, so if that's you, then you could utilize that. And if you do utilize the older Debian release, then of course it's going to look a little bit different, but the overall workflow should not be different. So what I'm gonna do actually is go down here to select a mirror. 
And I'll click right here for the AMD 64 ISO image. So we'll go ahead and download that. At the time of this recording, it's two gigs, so that could take a moment. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And while that's downloading, what I'm going to do is Google USB Imager. And I will have a link to this as well down below. This is what we're actually going to use to create our boot medium. So right here, I'll just click on USB Imager. Again, there's going to be a link down below just to make sure that you get to the right place. And then we'll scroll down. And as you can see, there's a version of the software available for pretty much every operating system. So what I'll do is click the GDI version right here for Windows. If you're running something else, then go ahead and click on whatever your operating system happens to be. But I'll click on this one. Let's go ahead and save it. And USB Imager is already done downloading. The Zubuntu image is quite a bit larger, so that's going to take a moment. So I'll be right back and then we'll continue. All right, so both downloads are all set and ready to go. So I'll close the browser and then we'll continue. So what I'm going to do next is insert my USB key. Specifically, I'm going to insert the USB key that I've designated for using as a bootable media for Linux. So I'll insert that now. And there it is. So let's open up files and go to downloads. And you can see that I have a number of things here, but specifically what we're interested in are these two files right here that we've just downloaded. So this is a zip file right here. I'm going to extract it. And here we have USB Imager. We also have this Zubuntu installation image file right here that we're going to use in just a moment. But what I want to do is open up USB Imager. And I'll click More Information. Since USB Imager allows you to make changes to storage devices, it throws up this warning just to make sure that you actually want to do that, and we do. So I'll click Run Anyway. I'll say Yes. And let's go ahead and close out of this and this. And now we have USB Imager. Now first, what we're going to do is select the image that we've downloaded. So let's just go up to our Downloads directory. And we have the Zubuntu image right here. So let's open that up. And then next, what we're going to do is select the USB drive that we want to use for the boot media for Linux. So I'll drop this down right here. And in my case, the flash drive that I'm going to use is this one. Just make sure that you choose the right device because this will wipe out everything on the device. Once we convert a USB flash drive to a Linux installation disk, then we lose everything on that flash drive. So if you have anything that's important, I'm going to assume that you've already backed it up. So I'll click on that. I'll leave the verify button checked. Let's go ahead and write the image. And there it goes. So right now, Zubuntu is being written to the flash drive, and I'll be right back as soon as it's done. All right, so it looks like the process is complete. So what I'm going to do right now is remove the USB key that I just wrote the installation image to. Let's eject it. And what I'm going to do now is move on to the computer that I want to recover files from. So what you'll do is make sure that it's shut down, insert the USB key, find out what the combination of keys for your particular model is that enables the boot menu. Once you know what that is, we can go ahead and continue. Now here I am switched over to the laptop that we're going to presume is not booting correctly and we need to recover files from it. What I've done here is I've just activated the startup menu for this particular computer. And this machine is actually a Lenovo laptop. So what I did was press enter at the Lenovo screen. And then right here we have an option for choosing a temporary startup device, which is F12 in my case. So that's what I'll press. Now, depending on your particular computer, the way that you access the boot menu might be different. It's very common on quite a few machines out there that F12 will get you to the boot menu, but it could be F10 or some other keys. So just consult the manual that came with your computer if you're curious what that might be. What you're looking for is a boot menu like I have right here. And I have quite a few options here because I have several different operating systems installed on this computer. Again, I'm just simulating a Windows failure. We have the Windows machine right here, and I could boot to Windows by selecting this option. We're going to pretend as though this doesn't work. And I have the option for my USB flash drive right here, which is what we want. Now, the verbiage might be different on your end. But essentially what we're looking for is something that has to do with booting from your USB flash drive. In my case, it's considering it a USB hard disk, but this is the option for me. 
If the flash drive doesn't show up on your boot list, then that could be because you've inserted your flash drive too late. So what you could try to do is just shut off your computer, insert the flash drive, and then get into the boot menu again, and see if that helps you get the option to appear. So I'll press enter to boot for my flash drive. And this is the boot screen for the flash drive right here. I'm going to press enter because I'm too lazy to wait for the 20 something seconds that it's going to take. So once you get started up into Zubuntu, this is the first screen that you should see. We have two options here. We have an option for trying out Zubuntu or installing it. Now the purpose of this video is to help you recover files from your Windows machine, so we're definitely not going to install it. If we were to click on that, we'd be wiping out the entire hard drive for our computer, and we definitely don't want to do that. So I'll click Try Zubuntu. And check this out, we're actually using Zubuntu right now. Now, even though we didn't choose the option to install it, we're actually running Zubuntu from the flash drive. So your hard drive has not been altered in any way at this point. If you want to return to your previous operating system, you just reboot and remove the flash drive, and it'll be like nothing ever happened. Now what this is called right here is a live environment, which is very popular when it comes to Linux. Linux distributions typically let you preview them before you install them, basically try them out. And what we could do is use that preview mode, that live mode, to grab the files from our hard disk. So what we'll do is we'll go over here to the home icon, we'll double click on it. Now what we want to do is find out which hard disk is actually our Windows hard disk and see whether or not we can access it. So I'll just make this bigger. And we can see some hard drives right here on the left hand side. Now I'm running multiple operating systems on this particular computer. So I'll need to choose the one that actually represents my Windows installation. And I know it's not this one. I did encrypt my Pop! OS installation. So it's definitely not that. I'm going to bet it's probably this one right here. What we'll do is we'll click on it. And I could tell you that this is not the one we're looking for because the one that we're looking for has some specific files in it. And this is it right here. I know that it's the correct one because of the folder names that we have here in the file window. For example, we have a users directory, which is exactly what we're looking for. That's where your user files on your Windows installation are actually stored. We also have program files directories right here that are going to contain all the files for the programs that are installed on that disk. That's actually a lot harder to transfer, so I don't recommend you grab those. But what we definitely want, we want those files. So let's go into users, and then you find your username. And you can also grab the files from more than one user as well. And this is the user that I have on that particular installation. So what we want to do is right click on it, and go down here to properties. And that's going to give us an overview of how big that folder actually is, how much data we have inside that folder. Now what I recommend, if you can, if you have enough space, is to grab the whole folder. So what I'm going to do is just right click on it, I'm going to copy it, and that'll get it ready to be copied to another storage device. And the other storage device is going to be your external hard drive, maybe another flash drive, basically some sort of hard disk that you can copy files over to, it doesn't really matter what kind. But what I'm going to do right now is just plug in my other flash drive, and it should be automatically detected. And it is, it's right here. And it even opened up for me right here. So that's pretty cool. So we have that flash drive open. In my case, I have nothing on this particular flash drive at all. So what I'm going to do, since I copied this folder here, is I'm going to right click right here and I'm going to paste it into any blank area inside the window. And that's going to start copying files. Now there's going to be a few warnings or dialogue messages that come up. And I'll show you what to do in that case once we get to it. But for right now, I'm just copying the entire folder for that user to the flash drive. Now after this is done, I'm going to show you some other tips that you can use. For example, how to connect to the internet so you can upload files to Google Drive, which is very helpful if you don't actually have another flash drive. And I'll also show you some of the folders that you can grab if you want to grab, you know, individual files and not your entire user folder, which is helpful if your flash drive is small and won't hold all of your files. Anyway, I'm going to let this finish, and then I'll be right back. So this is an example right here of a warning that might appear. It's basically telling us that the file system does not support symbolic links. So you might be wondering, what does that even mean? Basically what this means is that shortcuts that you create within Windows aren't supported on Linux. And that doesn't really matter, because we don't need those shortcuts anyway. 
So we could safely skip this particular message. So I'll click skip all and then we'll let it continue. All right, so the process completed successfully. I have my user folder right here from my Windows installation. It's copied over here to my flash drive. So if that's all I wanted to do, I should be all set. Now, of course, you could grab individual files as well. So right here, I have the Windows drive mounted. So if I go into my user directory, and then for example, if I wanted to grab, let's just say my pictures, I can go in there. And here I have some sample pictures that I copied over here to this hard drive, basically some trips I went on last year. And if this is all I wanted, I could just simply grab all of these by highlighting all of these. I could copy just like we did before, and I could paste these folders right here. Now I won't do that because they're already inside this folder here. So there's no reason for me to copy it twice. But if you wanted just individual items, you could grab, let's just say your pictures, maybe you have some files saved on your desktop, documents, downloads, and we also have videos, saved games, and also bookmarks, if you use a Microsoft browser, are going to be under links. So you might want to grab that as well. If you use the built-in contacts feature within Windows, you'll probably want to grab that. But basically you grab whatever folders you want and then you copy them over to your flash drive or your USB disk if you'd like, and that should be all there is to it. Now I mentioned earlier that you could connect to wireless and upload your documents to a Google Drive or maybe some sort of online storage. So right here, we could click on these two little arrows and then we could click on a wireless network. This one right here is mine. So I'll type in the password. And then I'll connect. And now I'm connected to the internet. And what I could do is open up the web browser. And here we have Firefox. So if I was to go to a website, I'll just go to mine, for example, just to show you that it's working. Learn Linux TV right here in the browser. I can navigate to that site or any other site I'd like to. So if you had, for example, a Google Drive, you could just go to drive.google.com. And if you have enough space, you can sign in right here and upload your files to your Google Drive, and that should work as well. But basically, the whole point of today's video was to show you how to copy files off of your Windows system, and I've done that. Now, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to close out of almost everything here. We want to unmount your USB disk. That just makes sure that all the data is finished writing to that disk. We definitely want to make sure of that. Then I'll remove it. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to shut this down. So go up here to the main menu. We'll click log out and I'll click shut down. Once it's shut down, you can remove the flash drive. And again, as long as you didn't choose to install Zubuntu, then your hard disk should be unchanged. And you should also have a backup of the files that were in your Windows profile directory, which is awesome. Once you shut it down, you should be good to go to do whatever you're going to do with that computer. Maybe you want to get rid of it or maybe you want to reformat it and run Linux off of it. Either way, mission successful. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video and it's helped you to recover your files from a Windows installation. Linux is definitely an awesome platform that you can use for all kinds of things, including, as you just saw, file recovery. Let me know in the comments down below if there's any topic that you'd like me to cover on this channel, and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.